Welcome to another edition of Rational Alchemy. I'm joined today by Lyle Smith Grable of the United Way from just up the road from here. Lyle, welcome to the table. Thanks, Nigel. It's good to see you here. And this is the second time we're doing an interview about United Way. Yep. And I'm really excited because uh, it's good. Why don't you give us a, a brief overview of yourself? Yeah, so uh, Lyle Smith Grable is my name, and I uh, live up in Windsor, work for United Way of Well County. Actually, my uh, education background experience is in community economic development. And I've been working with our United Way for just under 10 years, started there in 2012. First time I'd worked at a United Way, never donated to United Way before, um, working at our United Way. I'm a donor now. But uh, yeah, first time to work with United Way, but really appreciative of our space and our United Way because we are interested in community development and helping the whole community. A lot of us down here didn't understand exactly what United Way did and how many fingers in the pies you've got. It's, mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing the work you do. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of, of the, the types of problems that, that Lyle and all of his co-workers run into on a daily basis. Currently in Well County, there are uh, 304,000 people live in Well County. 12% of those people live below the poverty line. I'll let you do the numbers, but if we just say 10%, that makes it 30,000 people. 51% of the county's children qualify for three free or reduced lunches, and just 39% of fourth grade students are proficient readers. Only 40%. That should have you scared. A couple of other little facts I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention here, which are, which are quite interesting. But according to the, uh, the Colorado State uh, Demographer, between 2015 and 2020, Will County will be seeing a 30% growth in 75 to 84 year old individuals and a 21% growth in the 85 to 90% year old group. I'm one of those old fossils and the older we get, the more strain we put on mm. the community. And when you look at these sorts of numbers in the future, it's going to become a real issue. Well, County, how, how does that compare to, say, Boulder County? It's a little smaller in population, but many of the challenges are the same, be it Boulder County or Larimer County or Weld County or the Denver metro area. Um, many of the challenges that we face in Well County are the same kinds of challenges that we face uh, throughout Colorado. So right. things like the cost of housing or the availability of child care or youth mental health or as you just mentioned, um, how to help older adults live uh, resourced and meaningful lives as our uh, expectancy of li living uh, yep. increases um, am amongst the population. So many of these challenges are the same, but the dynamics of those challenges are going to be different um, in that like the cost of housing in Well County is, a little, is less than Boulder County or a little bit less than, than Larimer County. So there are some differences in the specifics, but many of the challenges are quite similar. I can understand that. Mm. What would you say would be the biggest challenge you have at the moment? I, I think it's uh, the biggest challenge would be the cost of housing. Because of the cost of housing is so key to so many other um, ways that people live their lives. Because if, if I live in housing that's right priced um, and I can afford it, then I have more time for my children or for my parents. Right. Um, I have more time for recreation for my own physical and mental health. But if housing is really expensive, then I might have to have that second job or that uh, second and a half job. Um, and, and, and the stress that that can put on me in the ability to pay for housing is gonna impact every other area of my life. Oh, especially so, if you're yep. single. Yeah, trying to raise a couple of kids, mm -hmm. for instance, that yep. that would put That's one right. heck of a strain yep. on the family life. So, so those other challenges I mentioned before, I think they're all applicable. But it's that price of housing right here in Colorado and even in many other states in the United States yes. that is a, a fundamental challenge for many families. You know, Well County is is really sort of like on the plains, um, and I'd have thought housing would have been affordable out there, but mm -hmm. it's obviously not. Yeah, it just depends on the area. Um, I happen to live in Windsor, 
And uh, right now, I just saw a report that said that houses in Windsor are, are more expensive on average than in Fort Collins. Holy mackerel. <laughs> and, and a little bit less over in Greeley. Um, so not as expensive in Greeley, but still, you know, what is, it, what is affordable? If a house is $380,000 or $420,000 on average, is that affordable? It's not affordable for a person who's making minimum wage, certainly. That's correct. In fact, there was something right here which um, I found interesting, um, two things. Mm. Uh, in Well County, 43% of renters and 24% of mortgage payers spend more than 35% of their income on housing. Mm. And that, of course, makes them incredibly vulnerable mm -hmm. if they ever get into a financial crunch. Right, right. And, and typically, uh, uh, unfortunately, in America, financial crunch is typically triggered by a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Medical emergency, job loss. Yeah. Uh, a mental health challenge. I mean, there's, uh, there's an so accident. many, but yeah, so many opportunities for people to go over that cliff yeah. if they're living uh, in housing that is eating so much of their in income. Right, losing a job. There's nothing we, we can really do about that. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are a number of things. Uh, mental health is not something mm -hmm. that we as individuals can do a lot about. Mm. But getting financially bankrupt mm. because of medical bills, mm, mm -hmm. this is just plain wrong. Um, there was another interesting thing here, and I, I think this will really hammer home what we've been talking about. I don't quote it exactly. An individual has to work 80 hours a week at minimum wage to afford a one-bedroomed apartment in Colorado. And I mean, let's be honest, when they brought in minimum wage, it was to stop things like that from happening. Recent survey, I think it was Bankrate that did it, and it was something like 40% of people of households in the United States do not have any uh, amount, or, or, or they don't have enough emergency savings to be able to pay for an unanticipated $400 expense. Right. And, and another 20% have no emergency savings at all. So when you talk about that stretch of um, the cost of housing, and they're paying a, a family is paying 35 percent or more of their income on housing. Not only is that happening, but also when you don't have any savings for an emergency. So I, I need a new set of tires. My tires blow out. I need the tires to get to work. Well, tires cost more than 400 dollars. Yeah. And, and of course, you mentioned don't have credit, but mm -hmm. for those that do still have credit, as soon as they put that 400 bucks onto yep. their credit card, right, the chances are next month. Right. They're, They're in trouble. In crew interest, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, how about education? Because I, I know you guys do an awful lot of work mm -hmm. in education, which I don't think people are aware of. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give us a brief overview about what you do and how you do it? Yeah, so we actually, in, in many United Ways, this is their lead um, programming or the lead thing that they support is working with um, youth, children, youth, all the way from prenatal to, let's say, 18 or 21 or even 25. And oftentimes, it'll be called a cradle to career uh, continuum. Okay. So we want to support, we don't support school districts that often, though we do support some programming that happens in school districts um, that might happen in the classroom or out of the classroom, so it happens during school time. But uh, not all the time do United Ways support that kind of programming. More so, we'll uh, support child care providers, we'll support parents for that um, birth to uh, school age period, mm -hmm. just to help children to be in high quality child care, to help parents be better parents, um, to help early childhood uh, health, mental health and physical health. So that early uh, period from zero to five, and then also we support a lot of programming once a, a, a child or youth is in school, it's after school programming or out of school programming. So like a boys and girls club or a boy scouts or up in our area, a mentoring program called Partners mm -hmm. that serves Larimer and Well counties. Um, so we'll do this uh, out of school programming that helps students that are behind in their schooling to catch up because they need that additional support. Right. I believe one of the biggest problems is actually reading. Mm, right. Which really surprised me. Yep. Any idea why? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I hesitate to conjecture on the causes, but uh, I, certainly the solutions 
um, I think is a lot of what United Way supports. Mm -hmm. And again, in, in a lot of uh, different areas, Larimer County, Denver Metro, throughout the United States, throughout the world really, is how do we help that first five years of life to be the best five years possible? Because so much uh, of what happens for a child in, in later life is gonna be based upon did they get the needed supports, the, the health care, the um, child care that they need, the high quality child care that they need, have families that, uh, and parents that know how best to support their early reading um, and language skills. So what happens in those five, first five years is so important. And that's why United Ways oftentimes uh, put a lot of their resources into the programming that impacts children for those first five years so that they can be really <coughs> kindergarten ready and the likelihood that they're going to read at that, that milestone right. of, of end of third grade for, and beginning of fourth grade is going to be increased if they have the right inputs in the first five years of life. I remember I grew up in a small town in Kansas. Mm -hmm. um, our housing cost, our cost of living was sufficient or, or low enough that my mother could stay home uh, right. from work. My father worked full time. My mother stayed home. She didn't go back to work until we were in high school because she wanted to go back to work, not because she needed to go back to work. Yeah, because she just wanted to. Yeah. She wanted to. And I remember um, many days when, you know, pre-kindergarten or even during the summer when she would read to us like at lunch, like she would read to us at lunch, uh, then we, or maybe it was after lunch, do a little reading, take a nap, that kind of thing. And she was available for that. And this is back to that cost of housing or just cost of living generally, the uh, more so that people can't afford to live, the less likely they're gonna be able to spend that kind of quality time with their children. And then back to that idea of the reading level, you know, mm -hmm. at the beginning of fourth grade. Because of these other things, these other contributors, it just makes that kind of a measure, the likelihood of success for that decrease because of these other strains. Right. It's all connected. It's all connected. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Um, swapping channels just a little bit, but the, the amount of formula, baby mm -hmm. formula, mm -hmm. right. th that you gave away yep. in a year. Yeah. The number of diapers that you gave away in yeah. a year. Yeah. And the most wonderful thing, the number of vets that mm. you found housing for. Mm, right, And of sure. course, we all applaud you yeah, for yeah. working with the vets. Sure, sure. What United Way does is lead a, a regional effort. It's called the Northern Colorado Continuum of Care, and it has 40-plus member organizations in both Weld and Larimer counties. Um, and it's those 40 organizations that have has succeeded in uh, housing so many veterans. We've had a little over 600 veterans uh, assessed as experiencing homelessness since the beginning of 2016 when we started this coordinated regional effort. And as of right now, about 560 of those are housed. Wow. So we're moving towards ending yep. veteran homelessness. Maybe in 2022, it all depends on, you know, the number of yes. veterans coming into the system, the number of veterans that are uh, getting rehoused. So we'll see. But many of the th these things, um, and this is a United Way role. It's a unique United Way role that is uh, kind of like government, but not really. It's kind of like right. nonprofit, but not really. It's somewhere in between where we um, lead these uh, community-wide collaboratives that have lots of partner organizations to achieve goals that are bigger than any one of us can achieve. I applaud you for the work. And mm. to get that number of organizations all mm. talking together yep. and all heading in the same direction, yep. So, Lyle, how do people find the United Way? And how, more importantly, mm. how do they discover everything that you guys do? Our main office is located in Greeley. We're United Way of Well County. Footprint is like this, uh, not this area, but the part of Longmont. There's a tiny little bit, little bit of Longmont yeah, little, in little, uh, Well County. Yeah. And what's called the Carbon Valley, so southwest and uh, Windsor Severance, Johnstown Milliken, Fort Lupton, the Pawnee Prairie Grasslands and the pa Pawnee Buttes, yep. and then the Greeley area. So that's our area that we um, resource. But our main office is in Greeley, just downtown Greeley. There's also our website, um, unitedway-weld.org, unitedway-weld.org. And, and everything that we're talking about here um, is described to some extent on the website, so you can find out about it there. But certainly, you know, any of our staff is available to talk about our areas of impact, and that's early childhood, youth, uh, household stability, homelessness, older adults, 
and then what we call connecting weld, which connects people to resources. Right. So any of us would be available to talk with people more about that. Right. Yeah, and so our United Way, if you look at many United Ways, um, they're all going to be different. We're all separate nonprofit organizations. So if you compared us to Larimer County or to Pikes Peak United Way down in Colorado Springs, we're all going to look a little bit different. Um, our United Way is unique in that in addition to resourcing other organizations with funding or with AmeriCorps members, like yes. you interviewed an AmeriCorps member on this show, um, we also do a lot of direct service programming. And we do that direct service programming in early childhood. We work with child care providers to help them increase their quality. And during COVID, just to stay in business. Yes. Um, we also work with parents to help them become better parents to get the resources they need, like through the diaper bank. Um, we also do a lot of direct service programming in homelessness and household stability. So like that veterans work of coordination. And also we have what's called a housing navigation center that's located in, in Greeley and Evans. Um, to work with those experiencing homelessness. And then we do a lot of other direct service programming, uh, such as um, 211. We are part of the 211 Collaborative for Colorado, so we help resource the statewide network that is 211 so that people, when they don't have an emergency like a house burning down, but they have an emergency like I can't pay my rent, mm -hmm. they can call 211 and find out what resources are for that. So we just do a lot of direct service programming. Um, and of course, that's all described on the website. Absolutely. And um, I, I would urge people just to look at the website because you're going to get sucked in mm. about what these guys are able to do out there. It's absolutely incredible um, the amount of good that this organization brings to the entire country. Part of our United Way and many United Ways too, uh, I think the challenge for the future is to have a solutions mindset. Um, United Ways... They started out, if you didn't know, the first United Way was in Denver, mm -hmm. founded in 1887. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then uh, they kind of, they did that. Three, uh, was it a, 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 a priest, a rabbi, and... Two, yep, a woman who'd recently moved oh, that's to right. Denver from Cincinnati. Uh, two priests, a rabbi, and the dean of the Episcopal Church. Oh, that's Cathedral. right, the dean of the yep. Episcopal <laughs> Church, that's right. <laughs> so those five. And it was a fundraising, but it was a fundraising very focused on community. You yes. know, what is the community need? What's the immediate need? Um, and then over time, United Way became a fundraiser. Like no one yes. else was able to fundraise for nonprofits like United Way could. So United Way fundraises and then gives the, the proceeds of that fundraising to the individual nonprofits. Then we went through a period where United Way focused on more on programs, like individual programs, making sure they're efficient, they're serving the right people, they're uh, reaching the outcomes they were intended to, to reach. And so that's what funding was based on. And now United Ways are moving back kind of to that original beginning where we listen to the community and we think about how do we solve this challenge of homelessness or that uh, children not reading at grade level by the beginning of fourth right. grade. And, and could we imagine a day, you know, as a United Way, as a community, where every child is reading at grade level by the beginning of fourth grade? Because it can happen. Yes. I mean, it's, there's, it could there's happen. reasons it doesn't happen. And what are those reasons? And can we imagine a different kind of future? And then how do we, as a community, come together to see that it happens for right. every child? That's what I would say to, to you mm -hmm. and to others um, that are interested in, in community improvement in United Ways is can we become those kinds of communities? And you know, to a certain extent we are, but, uh, but if we don't imagine it, um, we won't become it. And, and that's what I, I hope that our United Way can do for our community and that other United Ways and, and other governmental agencies and people like yourself, let's just imagine that and then uh, resource you know, how we can get there. I'm hoping we'll get Lyle back to the table sometime in the near future. But for now, I'm going to sign off. I'm Nigel Aves, your host. This was Rational Alchemy. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>